Thank you, Doug. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Vector, for the opportunity to present at this evening's uh, CEP meeting. I'm Tom Dieter, the executive sponsor for Songs Decommissioned Solutions, and uh, I'll probably say SDS after that because I'm so used to saying SDS, so it's just an acronym for uh, Songs Decommissioning Solutions. Yeah, why don't we bring the microphone closer? I'll try and move up. It is a joint venture between Energy Solutions and AECOM. Uh, it's, a, it's a real good team. We both bring uh, not only nuclear uh, experience from the commercial industry, but from decommissioning. In my er early nuclear, nuclear career, I was involved in construction and repair of uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, before evolving into decommissioning and dismantling them, uh, so I've kind of completed the cycle starting in the early 70s until up till songs now where we're going to dismantle another one. Uh, my first two decommissionings, one was at Shipping Port in 1981 in Pennsylvania. I was a young man, uh, just got done working, uh, working on them and went out to uh, Shipping Port to help uh, decommission it. And that's the first time I met Admiral Rickover in my life. That was a true experience. My second was, one was at Fort St. Vrain in Colorado. Uh, we did the decommissioning and dismantlement there. Uh, it was done ahead of schedule and under budget, uh, both of those plants. So I think when Doug was looking at us, he was looking at somebody that could come in here and do it safely uh, and do it for the budget he had proposed and probably do a good job on beating the schedule. I was also fortunate to work at two DOE sites, uh, one being uh, Rocky Flats uh, in Golden, Colorado, and the second one was in Idaho uh, National Labs in Idaho. Uh, there were three uh, test reactors there, which uh, we dismantled and uh, decommissioned and cleaned up the area and, and turned that back to the Idaho National Lab. Uh, for future use as an industrial site. So that was a very positive cleanup in Idaho and Rocky Flats. Now I have the pleasure to lead uh, the experienced team of SDS uh, to a sex successful decommissioning of songs. I'm honored and, and, and really want to be here to contribute to the cleanup and restoration of the site songs to a beautiful uh, ocean view again. Uh, so kind of getting it back to its natural state without the, the twin domes there, uh, it'll look really different in seven years. Next slide. Oh, now you got to look at me. Next slide. Uh, I was vice president and project manager at Rocky Flats. Uh, the before and after picture of Rocky Flats, uh, you can see up here. And uh, we accomplished this in about 10 years. It was estimated to complete it in 36 years and $36 billion. We beat that by a long ways. This is still one of my proudest accomplishments in my life. I helped lead uh, many of the projects at Rocky Flats, including decommissioning and demolition, demolition of the site, which was a trigger or pit uh, manufacturing facility uh, for the bombs. So it really had something in my heart to do that cleanup there. Uh, these large buildings just up uh, from the pond there uh, um, contain many liquid systems and dry systems of a lot of plutonium, americium, enriched uranium, depleted uranium, uh, sludges, uh, everything you could think of was at that site. And we cleaned that up ahead of schedule and under budget. It took us about uh, 10 years and uh, we did it for way less, probably $7.6 billion, $7 billion, which it was supposed to be about $36 billion. Uh, the picture on the right, uh, you can see that. That is now turned into a wildlife refuge. Uh, many people get to go out there and look at animals in their natural habitat out there, and many of the plants and uh, uh, special items out there for vegetation are out for all to see, so you can go across that site now. Next slide. 
This is, this is one of our partners we're really proud to have on our team. As you can see from the before and after photos of the Zion Nuclear Power Station in Illinois, that the demolition is uh, just about totally complete and the site is nearing completion. Our JV partner, Energy Solutions, had, has made great progress and has done an excellent job at Zion. They will complete ahead of schedule and under budget on this site. And as you can see, as some of those dates up there, uh, the demo complete, uh, the project uh, will finish in early 2020, uh, so they're gonna beat their final date. Now, having many of these people uh, on our site right now that actually performed work at Zion are on our SDS team now at Songs and really give us a great advantage in planning and performing our work. Because of their recent and relevant experience in decommissioning, plus all of the lessons learned that they bring to us, it allows us to incorporate their lessons learned in our work and planning as we go along. And it is invaluable to have them on our project. This project is very impressive. I've been on a few sites like this, and those are two big reactors, and they've done an excellent job. We're glad to have them on our team. Hey, David, can I ask you a quick question? Um, question. Quinn. Yeah, the, on this right figure, where is the spent fuel storage? Is it? It's on. It's on site somewhere. The right? SPC is in the upper left corner. Mm -hmm. We were yeah. on this site um, yeah. a couple years ago. Oh, so in the just, upper left hand corner. Barely on the photo. You barely okay. on the photo. So okay. Is that a switching yeah, station too? The, yeah, that was that was a, another quick. They kept the switch charge there too. Yes, and we're going to keep them here. In the yeah, next right. photo, you see that. Let you continue, but we're a little tight on time. Okay, next photo. Uh, Songs Decommissioning Solutions has been committed for several years now through the request for proposal, the contract award, and the decommissioning planning, and now after the permit to actually start in the near future for the decommissioning of Songs. When I first arrived at the Songs uh, project, I dedicated many hours of my time to reviewing characterization, characterization data with my RAD protection manager, and I also conducted several thorough tours of the site. Based on my experience and knowledge from other cleanup and decommissioning projects, I was very satisfied with the condition of the plant, its cleanliness, and how well maintained that uh, SCE has kept it. Uh, you don't see too many plants when you walk into them like this for decommissioning in this great a shape. In the after photo, uh, in the after photo highlighted or illustrated what remained uh, once decommissioning is complete. The lower portion of the photo shows the seawall and the walkway that is protected by a strip of riprap. If you can, I don't have a pointer with me, but all the way along the ocean there, there's a walkway with a wall and then the riprap's out in front of it. Uh, Song's SCE tasked us with building up that riprap and making it sh uh, really strong for many years to come. So we're out there working on it right now. Uh, we have about, I don't know, 50 to 80 feet left. Uh, and it's really a process of placing each rock in the right spot and their big boulders that we're putting up front of there. So it will protect that shoreline for a long time in the future. And we should be with, complete with that in the next several months. Next photo. Dan, did you want to comment on this? Um, uh, when you have a chance, I was curious what the RAD levels were at Zion after you completed the cleanup. Uh, we'll have to bring those to the next probably decommissioning. I, I didn't bring actual levels from Zion. Um, I, I wasn't on that project, or I could have brought, brought them with me, but we can promise to bring them next time. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, you very much. And the riprap um, improvement, is that being driven by concerns about sea level rise? Well, the, the, just the last part of your question again. Why, why did the riprap, why is our riprap <coughs> inferior, or whatever the right term is in the riprap world? Is it because of concern about sea level rise, or what's causing the need to improve the riprap? Well, we, we are wanting to protect that walkway wall, and some, uh, during that last high tide when it was the salsas, we had some really, really big waves coming in there, and it washed some of that riprap back. So we've actually <laughs> taken out part of that foundation of it, put smaller rocks in to build a good bed, and then build those rocks up to protect that walkway 
uh, so we don't have sinkholes in that walkway, okay, so great, people are comfortable walking across. Okay, we should let you go on. Okay. Uh, this, this next one is a video coming up. I guess it's going to start. I just want to say one thing about this video when you watch this. Once dismantlement of San Onofre nuclear plant well, begins, after safety and environmental time. stewardship will guide the process every step of the way. Southern California Edison selected the team of AECOM and Energy Solutions for this project, one of the largest commercial nuclear plant decommissioning projects in the world. This animation illustrates a conceptual technical approach which will be refined during the detailed planning process. The initial demolition will focus on clearing areas of the property to facilitate staging and seamless loading and removal of debris. This demolition on the north side will also clear space for a rail spur to allow for transportation of debris, such as concrete and rebar. Next, the team will create a path down to the intake area by removing the turbine buildings, creating access to the west side of the property. After this work is complete, the buildings between the containment domes will be demolished. Temporary structures will be used during demolition to control dust and other debris. Areas within the safety, fuel, and nearby buildings will be demolished internally. In the final stage, the containment buildings will be demolished using a bottom-up technique that has proven effective in prior nuclear plant decommissioning projects. Soil materials will be used to create a level surface, the final step in fully restoring the site for unrestricted use. San Onofre's used nuclear fuel, which is regulated as high-level radioactive waste, will remain on site in a robust steel and concrete storage facility until the federal government provides an off-site facility as required. The San Onofre decommissioning team is committed to environmental stewardship and remaining engaged with the community throughout the decommissioning project. I was gonna tell everybody on that video, as you see the domes disappearing, going down, it looks like they're going into the ground. Those are big excavators at the bottom of it where they knock arches out in the side all the way around. And then we bring that down even with those excavators by continually taking out the bottom of that wall so the dome, keep, dome keeps coming down. And all of that work on the contaminated work is a majority of it's done on the inside of the domes before we ever start on that. So we tear everything out of the inside in the control of those buildings. We package that up and then we take it out of the building and then we decon and we get it down to a level that we can actually knock down that building without any releases to the air, to the environment, or to the land. So when you're looking at it, a lot of that's done inside before we ever start tearing anything down. So you won't see a lot of demolition until probably three, four years out where we've actually gutted those out and cleaned them up before we start the demolition. You saw a bunch of big tents on there. Those tents are for when we take the waste out that it's already housed in something. We have negative ventilation on that with HEPI units to keep that negative air whenever we're doing work inside that container. Yeah. That was just pause. a little bit about the Thank dome. you very much. And when we were at the Zion site, the, you had this giant tents up. I think we have some photographs from the meeting when uh, uh, Tim and I reported out on that. Jerry Kern? Uh, just, just one quick, in your video, it kind of showed the domes coming down simultaneous. Is that going to happen that way, or are you going no, to do that, it in a sequence? That was basically for our animation. There, there's not enough room around there to get our equipment and be able to get the rubble out fast enough. So one dome will come down, and then the second one. It just cost me more money to make more animation if I didn't do them at the same time. And he's got me pen and pinching pennies already, so uh, it's, it's, it's a good deal. No, he, he supplies us with plenty of money, so it's, Jim, a, it's a good deal. Oh, it's Jim joking. Desmond? Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Hold, hold on a second. I think we got a question yeah, from Jim Desmond. I, I just uh, I had a question. Just the slide, I think, before the video, for the storage, uh, it's IF, ISFSI. I'm, I'm assuming that's uh, spent fuel storage unit, or that that's the site. 
Um, do you know how, how high above sea level the floor of that, the storage facility is? No. Eight and a half feet. So it's, only, it's eight and a half feet above sea level. And then I had a question on the demolition. The, um, the material, is it going to be treated on site? Uh, like the concrete, is it ground up and treated on site before it's hauled off, or is it hauled off or, and then, uh, I guess, decontaminated um, someplace else? Uh, we are going to haul all this material to Clive. It's uh, in Utah. All, all the, the concrete uh, will be busted up, uh, steel removed, put into gondola cars that already have burrito wraps kind of things inside of them where you set your concrete inside, you wrap that up like a burrito, and then a steel lid goes on top of that. And it's all shipped by rail uh, to Clive. Uh, so it's a, it's a process of, of loading it. A lot of it gets loaded inside those tents, and then the clean concrete is, uh, of course, done outside like normal construction. All right, thank you. Okay, we should let you continue, because we have uh, I, I shall Corvette finish up. Uh, this before and after picture, and I, I'm just going to talk about this a little. It's, it's our objective uh, to turn this site back into more of a natural state. And Lou Bosch and I have talked about many things. Him and I are real um, aggressive on safety. But my vision is to protect our workers, the environment, and our communities around songs, return songs to a stun stunning view from the beach. Our mission is to perform our work safely, effectively, and efficiently, and return songs to future use for the Navy. Our guiding principles and my guiding principles of our company is a strong safety culture. We listen to our workers, we take their advice, they usually have the best advice, and we implement that in our plans. We're going to protect the beach, we're going to protect the ocean, we're going to protect the air, and the land around songs. So anything I can do to protect that, I will. We're gonna plan our work and we're gonna work our plan. We manage in the field, we're not office sitters. Myself and all my guys will be out in the field <coughs> making sure we're doing things right and we will deliver a high quality and value to our customer and to the stakeholders in this room. And thank you very much. Can I just make one comment about it before we go to Bob Corbett? Um, Obviously, the question of the end state of the site is still being worked on by the Navy and other parties. I think it would be really helpful sometime sooner rather than later to be able to envision what the site looks like and to get some active community input into that. What are the options and trade-offs? At the end of the day, the licensee and you have obligations, including regulatory obligations, but I think the community would like to know, um, and I welcome public comment on this now and, and in the future, would like to know more about what the site would look like, when, what kind of input is feasible that could be of enormous value. Thank you. Okay. We can do that. 